everyone had to drink the cup of God's wrath. It is though with one hand God is holding back his justice against this world and with another hand he is pleading for men to come but one day both hands will be dropped. You know that, don't you? Let me give you another example. Heaven is heaven because God is there. Well, that is, most, that is true. But then the counter is not true. Hell is hell because God's not there. That's not what Scripture teaches. Hell is the wrath of Almighty God. It is His perfect justice revealed against men throughout an eternity. That the wrath of God will come in such a way that men will cry out, the great captains and leaders of this world will cry out that the rocks fall upon them to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. The wrath of God. Well, I just don't believe that. Well, just what you believe doesn't really matter what the Scripture teach. The sense of being cut off from His favorable presence, of dying without Him. Separation. And then, not just separation, but wrath. Justice had to be poured out. It had to be. Now, it will be poured out on some of you. I'm not a prophet. I have no insight into your heart. But it would be very vain and unwise to suppose that every human being listening to my voice, whether here or via the internet or whatever, is truly a child of God. Wrath will be poured out on some of you throughout an eternity in hell because of the crimes you have committed and will continue to commit throughout all eternity. The raging of your heart against the sovereignty of a good God. But wrath, the wrath of God, it will be poured out on some of you. But wrath, the wrath of God, it will be poured out on some of you. But wrath, the wrath of God, it will be poured out on some of you. It will be poured out on some of you. The wrath of God. The wrath of God. The wrath of God. My dear friend, if you are saved here tonight, you are not saved merely because the Romans beat Jesus. You are not saved merely because they nailed Him to a tree. If you are saved, you are saved because when He was nailed to that tree, He bore your sin and God the Father crushed His only begotten Son. It was God who had to measure out the punishment. It is God who had been offended. It was God's wrath that had been kindled. It is God's justice that had to be poured out. Someone to save a people for God had to interpose and suffer the judgment, the wrath, the justice of God. Have you never read in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, and it pleased the Lord to crush him. It fulfilled the will of Yahweh to crush His only begotten Son. Someone had to bear sin. Someone had to become a curse. Someone had to be like that scapegoat. The leaders of Israel would come out and lay their hands upon that goat, symbolically transferring the sins of Israel to that goat. One goat would be slaughtered and another would be driven outside the gates of the city, left in the, well, in the wilderness to wander and die. So Christ suffered outside the gates of the city, cut off from God, cut off from His favorable presence, and cut off from the people of God. In order for that gap we're always talking about to be, to be brought back together, someone had to die separated from God's favorable presence and separated because He bore the sins of His people and became a curse. Even before His own Father, have you never read Galatians chapter 3? Cursed is every man who does not abide by all the things written in the book of the law so as to perform them. Every man who has broken even one law of God is under a curse. What does it mean to be under a curse? It's a very difficult thing. It's such a horrible idea. Let me put it to you this way. 
To be accursed means that before a holy God and a holy heaven, we would be so heinous in our sin, so vile, that the last thing we would hear when we took our first step into hell would be all of creation standing to its feet and applauding God because He's rid the earth of us. But then it goes on in Galatians 3.13 and it says, But Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? Becoming a curse for us on our behalf. The filth, the guilt, the shame before a holy God. The sense of being cut off from His favorable presence, of dying without Him. It will be poured out on some of you. But wrath, the wrath of God, it will be poured out on some of you. But wrath, the wrath of God, it will be poured out on some of you. But wrath, the wrath of God, Hell is the wrath of Almighty God. The wrath, the wrath, the wrath of God, the wrath of God, the wrath of God. It will be poured out on some of you. It will be poured out on some of you.